Hello and welcome back to the Imminent Tortoise Talk Toys 2023 wrap up. That was a needlessly long Probably way gone. of saying it. Uh, so this is part three of our look back on 2023. There is part one and two are up if you're interested in discussions of like films and video games and music and stuff. But uh, I appreciate if you don't want to do that either and you just want to listen to this. Or maybe you're not listening to this but you're somehow aware that I'm currently saying this right now. Maybe you've got this on mute and you're using YouTube auto caption, uh, which is interesting. I wonder how easily it picks up our accents with that. Osveen mm. Sharad Kamraig, do you do you YouTube and go board based between Dwayne? That's another one. There you go, YouTube. Have fun with that one. Right. Uh, so we are on to part three and the penultimate section, which is our favourite thing of 2023. Now, this is a bit of a vague one. It always has been a vague one. I'm going yeah. to work on the phrasing for next year, but it's basically the thing that we experience in 2023 that we enjoyed the most that will maybe last with us for years to come, thinking back to 2023. Yeah. Uh, so... I'm kind of bringing something back from last year, but in a different segment. My favourite thing of 2023... Please don't laugh at me, everybody. Oh, don't laugh any more than you already do. Uh, is the introduction of the new modes in Fortnite. Uh, <laughs> so, honestly, <laughs> genuinely, when they announced a few months ago that they were bringing, like, uh, a Lego mode to Fortnite, I was like, oh, okay, cool, that's fine. Uh, and then they were like, oh, boy, there's a racing game and there's like a rhythm game as well. And I was like, yeah, cool. OK, um, um, sh- someone will have fun with them. Cool. You you do that. And so I played them when they came out. And you know what? They are like for the, for the fact that they are free, they have no reason to be this good. So Lego Fortnite is basically, if anyone is aware of Lego Worlds, which is a kind of Minecraft Lego game where you just had an open free world and, you know, you, you fought bad guys, you built houses and stuff. And they've basically just ported that to le- to Fortnite, but made it better. Uh, it is ridiculously deep. It has the crafting mechanics you'd find in any kind of survival game. Um, and it's just genuinely, genuinely quite charming and visually very impressive as well. Uh, and that's running on a PS4. I'm sure it looks even better on next-gen stuff and PCs. Uh, Rocket Racing, which is the racing game developed by the Rocket League people, is really, really fun. Uh, I am gold to rank, just just to flex. Uh, not that anyone cares, but still, it is incredibly fun. Uh, it is actually a Rocket League racing game, which is just... It's, it's something you can jump into. Honestly, I've been really getting into racing multiplayer racing games this year. It's just a trend. Um, And Festival Stage, which is literally rock band. Sadly, you can only play it on controller or keyboard at the moment. But apparently, next year, they're going to sell rock band peripherals again. We are back in the early 2010s again. You can actually buy a rock band guitars and drums and stuff, which I'm probably going to end up buying, I'll be honest. Um, This isn't meant to be... a slight to origin or anything, but I did try out the mode uh, over my nephew's house, who is a four-year-old. Um, but it was, they, they were very enjoyable. He showed me how to play them, and yeah, I was I was surprised how in depth um, and how fun the modes are because, like you said, I wasn't expecting anything amazing from them, but they look yeah. really fun, yeah. and they they genuinely are just a uh, a cool thing, especially like you said, considering that they are of no cost whatsoever. So yeah, yeah really they- fun thing, um, building on on favorite game of 2022, and yeah, they, 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 they are quite fun, so I understand why you would pick this as your option. Yeah, I, I never expected to be this hyped about Fortnite, uh, but here we are, this... 2023 yeah. is, you know, you can never predict it. I was it. semi, semi sort of related around about Fortnite, and uh, uh, there was a guy, as a guy on YouTube, I can't remember his name, uh, but uh, basically uh, he was saying that you used to work for Blizzard, and not anymore, and he's he's made his own uh, like video com- company and or etc. And he does contracts and stuff, right? And he was saying that he worked on the. Um, 
a you know world world of warcraft um dlc or something like that right and not many people paid for it right but the one singular transaction uh, microtransactional item was more than <laughs> people paid more for that than the dlc and that's why microtransactions are so big because people people sort of gravitate towards it and and it's an interesting topic because it's a double-edged sword but i think as we discussed the year before i think you know uh epic are doing a good job with fortnite and it's Mm -hmm. evolved to the point where like well they're they're doing what they're doing uh, which is like they've actually stuck with that a lot of companies will do the cringe marketing thing of like we're creating a platform this is a jumping off point we're making a world say yeah yeah cool you've added battle royale onto your third person shooter gg man well done that's gonna it's a whole new genre well done but like fortnite actually you're just like oh this is gonna be a platform you can play all types of games it's like oh wait oh they weren't lying you can it's it's funny really because i think the start of this year and like the end of last year there was this big jump towards a metaverse and web uh, mm, web yeah. free, and I think it's really crashed and burned. Yeah, in a big way. I think everything's kind of gone down with NFTs and stuff, which were meant to be a big part of it in terms of items. However, Fortnite has kind <laughs> of done it itself. Yeah, it it's... and not in a horrible way, like. Hmm. Obviously, it's a it's weird, right? Because Fortnite doing well with all these different characters on the game, etc., and all these different modes is really good. But I kind of don't want to see other companies take ideas from it because they're going to do it in the most horrible, exploitative ways possible. I think it's yeah. going to happen. It's but if they do it in the same way, then absolutely go for it. Like, if you're going to do it in a way that here's an extra mode, then they don't cost more. Yeah. Here you go. Yeah, I, go for it. I I will say there is. Yeah, you take note. There is technically monetization for these modes, but so far, like all they are, like Fortnite is purely cosmetic. Like you can mm. buy a different car for rocket racing, or like. Uh, yeah, he, totally fair. Here's a here's a guitar to play on the stage thing, but it's like. Functionally, much like Fortnite, you could be default for life and still play it for hundreds of hours and, you know, you maybe, get the same. Maybe you're right. I mean, maybe you're right on that one and maybe the right the mm. right kind of lesson will I, be learned from I this. Think... But it kind of comes... The original idea of NFTs being transferable between different games and stuff, which is... yeah. I, I think that wasn't the... good. That was horrible. No, I... And I hope now companies have learned that there's a better way of doing this. Hmm. Right, on to Dan's pick. Dan, what was your favourite thing of 2023? For me, hmm, I would say it's um, Barbenheimer. See, no, I, I think you pretend to think I, about it like you haven't already mm, decided in I, advance. Like, hmm, hmm, I'm going mm, mm, mm. to think about this thing that I've already you said know, within it's, the answer. It's, mm. it's weird, Dan. You're not going to believe this. None of you are going to believe this. I wish I was live streaming. The image I have on the screen right now is Barbenheimer. Wow. <laughs> what? That's mad. What are the chances? Holy, honestly, <laughs> right? Just, again, I, I don't want to... Don't want to sound like maybe I believe I'm psychic, but every image I've had on screen so far has actually correlated to what we've been talking about. You but, just know uh, it so well. But it's been on screen well, before we were talking about it. <laughs> I, we'll see. We'll see if there's a furry in there somewhere, Red. Oh, maybe, yeah. I've, maybe I've made a, that was an accident. A, okay, a joke but yeah. about All right, jokes thing. aside, I it was a quite a surreal moment in... I mean, obviously, I think... Basically, um, you got to think, uh, not to bring up COVID, but you got to think, for the whole time, we were stuck indoors. It wasn't fun. Uh, you know, going to the cinema was, you know, in, near t- to impossible at the time. And then, I, you know... Anyway, the reason I bring that up is because 
you know, go into go. It was um, it was a cinematic experience, and I don't think you'd have that um, again in particular because you had Bob and uh, <laughs> sorry, you had you had Oppenheimer, which I mentioned earlier uh, in the part two. Is it part two or part one? Either way, I love that film. It's great. Part one. Well, it was part, part one. one. Part one, Definitely. there we go. Definitely part one. It has to be part one. We can go into that later. But so, coincidentally, that film released... Uh, another film released uh, uh, on that day, and it is Barbie. And so the whole um, um, internet just went wild. It was like, right, well, which one are you going to watch first? Are you going to watch this and that? Or... You know, and and it was quite fun, and it was it was just. I think what it is, I think partly it's because of the subject matter of both. You got one which is about um, destruction and the fate of humanity, and then you got Oppenheimer. Yay. 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 No, no, no. I, I Barbie, I really enjoyed as well i didn't i i I thought it was really written well it was funny um i think ryan goslin steals the show but you know margot robbie terrific job as as barbie and you know and again it's just really written well and i didn't i i thought "Mm, how's this how's this gonna go you know and and it was really written well and um it was actually really funny as well there was some really funny moments in there she's like oh i don't know about it what was that scene where she's crying about the um is it patriarchy or matriarch i, I don't know it, 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 <laughs> yes i don't know it's been a while i remember but there was some lines in that uh, were just that really tickled me <laughs> and um and I- uh it was a very enjoyable experience. And yeah, watching I, them back to back was the right way to do it, 100%. Yes. I can confirm as well, Dan went in full costume. He, he, <laughs> yeah, yeah, he, he, did. He, he came, I did. Dan came as the Oppenheimer part of the duo, and, and, and I came as the Barbie part of the duo. And, you know, it was it was fun. And it was an enjoyable just, experience. It was a fun time. Yeah. And yeah, I think the fact that they both came up together gave a lot of... Um, and we went out fun. afterwards as well. Uh, yeah. With, uh, you know, it was... It was it was a, it was a, that's the thing, it was, uh, and I think the right way of doing it is watching that Oppenheimer first, yeah. then, then we went to, did we have food? Yeah, we, went, we got Mexican. Yes. We, yeah, we had tacos, we had tacos, and then, or burritos even. That is then, relevant. Yeah, yeah, so it, it's the, so, the no, this is important, our listeners want to know this they so want what, to know what time what we did had. we don't what time did we order the tackles and then what what time did we eat them or was it oh, i think it was about six ish maybe anyway, but yes. yeah yeah anyway anyway but it was i i don't know i i, I look back fondly on that um I... experience and it was i you know it was really memorable and yeah i agree i think as a it, it's really interesting as a phenomenon because it's not the first time it's happened that i can think no of. There so, was the there was the Animal Crossing game came out the Doom. same as Doom Eternal, Doom Doom. Yeah, and there was a lot Doom. of fan art and crossover there. Yeah, two very kind of polar opposite things. One cutesy, one like war and hellish. Yes, and they linked off each other and did better as a result. And I yeah. think what happened with Barbenheimer was. You had people who would only normally go see Barbie go in to see Oppenheimer, and people only go in to see Oppen. Like I wouldn't have gone watch Barbie, I don't think, no. if not for this. And I liked as well how like the stars. In fact, recently there was um, there was an interview between was it C- How do you say his name? Cian Murphy. Cian Murphy. Cian Murphy and um, got a name now. Jesus, but Mark they had Robbie? an in- yeah, Mark Robbie, Robbie, yeah, and they recently interviewed each other and talked about the phenomena. Then this they led into it, yeah. Hmm. So yeah, they linked into each other, and it's interesting. Dan and Tim, you yeah, all had costumes. I alluded it earlier to a guy in pink shorts. Guy in the cinema, and there were a few of the people doing this. His top half was very Oppenheimer, drower suit, and then. He was wearing like pink shorts and and flip flops. It was 
it was a really good cultural phenomenon. And in all honesty, with the cinema these days being so cheap, I'm glad they got people in because mm. after COVID, I think it, it's good to go to the cinema again. And I'd recommend more people go and watch films than cinema. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Like, what is it, like £4 a ticket these days? It's... Five or six or seven. Yeah, it's just ridiculously cheap you now to go to the cinema. So highly recommend. I hope something like this happens again because, honestly, they were probably some of the, two of the best films this year. Agreed. And I'm, I'm glad this happened. I'm glad this happened. Yes. Right, let's go over to Tim's nomination for Best Thing of the Year. Tim? So my Best Thing of the Year is something that I've done a full 180 on, and that okay. is the Pokemon Scarlet and Violet DLC. <laughs> oh my god, yeah, the other day you were you were saying it was full, rubbish. Full <laughs> rant about this the other day, because so there were two parts of it, for people who don't know. Um, they did the first part, the teal mask, and then the indigo disc. And I really enjoyed the first one. It added a lot more Pokemon, and I, that's like my favourite thing about it. It's a really simple part about it, but going out and seeing all the different Pokemon running around in their natural environment, and it, yeah, really fun seeing the returning Pokemon. And then it had quite a bit of story as well. Then the second one came out, my initial thought was, oh, good Lord, the story's over so quickly. I, I played it, and it's like a cutscene, you fight the people... And then you're done. You don't go and do it, get a legendary, and it's done. And I thought, oh, that was really short and disappointing. But then the amount of stuff you do after that, I think, really, really made up for it. So many things about it was were things that kind of drew me back to it. Um, the idea of the terrarium and like having all these different Pokemon, including working to get the um, the starters in the wild, which was nice to see, which has never really been done before, where you can actually encounter the starters in the wild and shiny hunt them and um, and the legendary is coming back. Although I'm annoyed that they're shiny locked, it is cool that they did yeah. it. And um, introducing the new paradox forms for the Gen Two beasts and the Gen Five things. Even though I'm uh, another slight criticism is that the old paradox forms of the legendary beasts are ten times better than the new ones. Um, it was still cool to see them, and it was still really cool to go and be able to catch them. So. I very, very much enjoyed going through that. And even though, I, for those reasons I said before, I, I was initially quite critical of it, I then realised that over the Christmas holidays just gone, I spent a hell of a lot of time playing it, and it was really charming. Going through and doing the, the, the BBQ quest, mm -hmm. the, the quest for BP and, and the blue blue points or whatever, has been really quite a nice way to experience the game, where it gives you kind of certain quests, like take a photo of a Pokemon swimming, go and do a raid quest, go and make yourself a TM, really uh, kind of motivate you to do things in a different way and go and maybe do things you wouldn't usually do to get these points to kind of um, get new and cool items and things. I won't go into what, in case spoilers. And also I really enjoyed the kind of Gen 5 theme because the, the place it's set is Unova, which is from the Black and White game. So the little musical nods and the little nods on the map to um, the Gen 5 games was very nostalgic and uh, a very nice touch. So even though I was initially quite critical of them, I've done a full 180 and have realised it was actually a very enjoyable experience. Didn't they, yeah. um, I was going to say, didn't they, like, one of the designs of the Legendary was a bit, uh, I, 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 I don't know Pokemon there very well, but it was one of them I heard that people were like, oh, that does not look good, one of the Legendaries. Well... And they looked I think the the kind of future forms everyone's been like, eh, you know, like they, they just kind of look at future forms. But the past form, um, the Raikou that looks like it's got a really yeah, long that's one. the one, that's yeah. the one, the Raikou. Yeah, I, that's been a very um, polarizing. People either love it or hate it. I am I love fully it. on board. I fucking I... think it's fantastic. I think it looks hilarious in like the best way. Um, people have said, oh, it looks stupid, it looks goofy, oh, they've messed up the lore of the legendary beasts, but I think they're just having a bit of a whinge, because it, it Yeah, it I mean, cool. that's I mean, that's a stupid thing, because technically those past and future things, they're a past that is an action, hasn't actually happened. Exactly. I think that was the law. It was like I was thinking past in another universe or yeah. something. Yeah. See, I didn't know because I I was looking. I mean, I'm looking at them now before and after, and a part of me is like, well, 
I, I was thinking, well, Tim might like it because it kind of looks like giraffe rig with the long neck, maybe. <laughs> I do love giraffe. That's, yeah. that's what I was thinking. I was thinking it might, like, so, so. <laughs> uh, but yeah. even, even beside that, I think it just looks good. I think it just yeah. looks fun. It's, 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 it's an interesting concept. Mm. I think me and Tim have just done our dexes completely. We have. Um, it, I think, like Tim was saying, those barbecue quests kind of make you explore. Mm. And you see a lot of things. Like, it gives you opportunities to see shinies and stuff. Yes. Um, there's a thing you can get which is highly addictive. Mm, and me and the Tim spent maker, God, yeah. about an hour the other day on the item maker. It's not really a spoiler. It's just a mechanic. But mm. um, there's a gacha machine, essentially. Um, and you get lots of items. And they brought back Pokeballs, rare Pokeballs, and I think for me, you now being able to use them, I love catching Pokemon in balls that like suit the color scheme or stuff like that. So it's great to have this back now. Uh, again, the starters being able to shiny hunt them, I'm going to spend lots of time doing that. I think, uh, even though Go exists, I don't really play Go, so it's good to have that option. Um, but yeah, they also, they also. I'm not going to say what it is, but there's a mythic in there as well, uh, like with the DLC from the last games. So it's nice to be able to get something in the game that you could only previously get from events. That's nice. And um, this is in the end, they're going to do a epilogue. Mm, it yes. seems from the trailer, they're bringing back the characters from the main game. Yeah, we we'll love um, Arvin and Nimona. They are, they are cool. That's going to be interesting. But they showed them in Kitakami, so I'm curious to where that's going to go. Um, well, yeah, we're getting we're getting the the new mythic. Let's, let's, let's be honest. Yeah, yeah, but uh, yeah, it's been really. I've I've really enjoyed it as well. I I was I was quite dismayed when you thought it wasn't great, but now you've played it. Um, we're, I think we're of the same mind on it because I really enjoyed the DLC, as I did with the Sword and Shield DLC, which I think redeemed those games as well. So, yes. yeah. Nice. Uh, right. On to Tom's favourite thing of 2023. Tom? So, I I, I had trouble here. I was going to say something else, but Brig shot me down for good reason. I agree with him. Um, so, my favourite thing, I've got to say, was probably the GTA 6 announcement that we had the other day. Um, it's it's an interesting thing, GTA 6, because it's probably the biggest game in the world. I'd say even bigger than like Elder Scrolls games and stuff. It's the game everyone looks at, whether you're really into games or you're just like Normie. sort of on the periphery. Say the word, Tom. Say the word. It's a bit of a normie game, yes. But in a way, it's such a game with such depth uh, in terms of its sandbox that it warrants looking at by everyone, I think. Um, yes. So, <laughs> as a phenomenon, GTA 6 is quite interesting because I think it leaked... Was it the end of last year or the start of this year? There yeah, was there was a leak. And it was some, and... like... It was some like heavily development build stuff where you could see like all the lions and stuff. Um, but yeah, the trailer finally came out. Loads of and the funny thing with GTA, there's always like these fake like news articles they ever in Oh yes, like fake farm. Like they're everywhere. So it was good to finally see something because all these fake clickbait articles, the amount of people. Who spoke to me and say, "Oh yeah, it's going to cover free sex." It's like, no, it's not. No, it's not. So I, I'm glad that all the sh all the crap really has been put to rest as well. But in terms of the trailer, um, they've really lent into like social media, and I think mm. it's obviously in Vice City again. And I think it's going to be the wider area. They did give it's Florida essentially, and they've given it yeah. another name, obviously, in game. Um, but they've really linked into like the Florida man and stuff like that, the stereotype. Um, uh, I, think... I, I, I'm more excited about like the Florida Joker. Um, oh, yes. 
the, yes. the cultural impact of this game is really short because they referenced a few things or in this trailer, which is all we have right now to go on, they've referenced like a few things from real life. And one of them was this man who was arrested, I, I think because his tattoo or something revealed his crime. And the guy is trying to sue a rock star. For his likeness, basically. For, for you as in his likeness in the game. The thing is, that <laughs> happened, this has happened before, way back in uh, GTA V with Lindsay Lohan. Yes, yeah. Trying to sue them for, because one of the characters looked pretty much like her, but, uh, you know. It's, um, it's just yeah. such, it's so interesting as well. This, this one trailer has come out. And how much, like, discussion in the wider kind of internet it's caused. We've got people calling it, like, the best thing ever. We've got, we've got the typical crowd saying, oh, it's woke, and stuff like that, which is ridiculous. It's GTA. It's, it's What I mean is, it's a big event. It's not out next year. It's out as of now. 2025. 2025. Um, it's... Obviously, it's been in development a while. I can't see it being bad. Well, um, fingers crossed, anyway. I mean, I don't know. Have any of you played Red Dead Redemption 2? Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah. Because that was... That was groundbreaking. Like, I hate, I hate this phrase, groundbreaking, but that that was. That was a... That, but Honestly, it's one of the best games I've ever played, and it was so... It's still advanced, I'd say, now. And they're actually saying, yeah, there are things <laughs> that GTA 6 is more advanced in terms of lots of different things. So I'm very curious about where it goes, where they take it. And um, it looks beautiful as well. Like from the trailer, it really does look beautiful. Yes. And what they do generally with these GTA trailers, over time, they reveal more aspects of the game. So obviously this first trailer was focused on a character called Lucia, who yeah. seems to be one of the protagonists in the game. I don't know whether they're going to have any more, but she seems interesting as a character. It was like a Bonnie and Clyde kind of thing yeah. going on mm. in the trailer. I and think my, my guess is that you play the two characters, so... Um, um, I think so far it's only... I think she's only being confirmed. I think the mm. her boyfriend, what well, well, appears to be a boyfriend in the trailer, might be just a another character in the game sort of thing. Don't but know. I don't, we don't know. know. We don't know. We, we don't, don't know at this point. I it's guess. all unknowns. I'm sure there's going to be a load of trailers out next year, which will reveal little bits more to us, which will be pretty interesting. I guess it's something we'll just have to look forward to because that's the name of the last segment which is looking forward to 2024 uh happy 2024 if you're watching this because i think this is going up new year's day maybe uh maybe i can't work out dates or maybe 2025 (laughs) maybe uh again going back to i think it's part two if you want to watch this after watching like part one of 2021 or whatever you know it'll be it'll be fun um yeah so what are we looking forward to in 2024 i'll be honest mm. this segment is usually difficult for me i like putting it in there because it's a nice wrap up and it's a nice way to end mm. the podcast genuinely i kind of struggle every year and this year i sort of struggled again Rapping. like there's nothing i i don't keep up to date on a lot of things i'll be honest i i tend to find out about a thing like a month or two afterwards you, you live under a rock is what you're saying kind of i just i i don't you know i i don't pay attention enough to th- upcoming things so the best thing i could think of for next year is tekken 8 which is technically mm. in beta now but it's full release next year uh i was telling tim off off video which is where we mostly speak because that would be weird if all the conversations were recorded. Uh, oh, sorry, pressed the wrong button. Um, I have been mildly considering getting a PS5, maybe, uh, just because I've got a lot of games that would run better mm. on it and stuff. And there's lots of games coming out that will eventually come to PC. 
Uh, but I'm going to have to have a monstrously good PC to run it. Or a uh, Steam Deck. Possibly. Yes. Well, run it decently well. But, I mean, you're always... ID in the... games are difficult with fucking PCs, don't they? Especially you're, with online. You're always yeah. in the technical arms race, which is the Steam Deck is great for games now, but give it two years and it'll be like, oh, okay, you can run it in mm. medium. Uh, but yeah. anyway, Tekken 8, uh, I, I've seen quite a bit of it. So Tekken 7, I kind of wanted to get into competitively because I enjoyed playing online, but I just never put aside the time for it or whatever. Um, mm. But Tekken 8 does address the one thing that always mildly annoyed me with Tekken 7 is that high-tier play for Tekken 7 evolved a lot of pokes, which is like you'd rush in, hit quickly, and then Korean backdash away, and sort of it it would be mm. a little jab contest for like half the match, and then you'd hit the combo. This Tekken 8 seems to sort of like... Uh, it, it'll... It, well, not provokes you, but it sort of it rewards you for being aggressive. It's sort of like the the mm. whole point is to fight, which is good. I mean, you do see a lot of fighting games do kind of suffer from that. A lot of footsies, a lot of like mid range. It's more fun to have a game where you do just need to fight, uh, and Tekken Eight has kind of addressed that. It looks really nice as well. Uh, I really enjoyed Tekken Seven. I want to say as well, I think Tekken Eight they've sort of. Hinted there's going to be a bit more, a few more modes and stuff inspired by Street Fighter Six, I think mm. as well. They kind of looked at that as like, oh, our oh, people want story and stuff, I guess. So, but yeah, that's... what looks good, which is something that was missing from Tekken Seven when it first came out, was a lot of like, oh, this very famous character that everyone has played as for years will be DLC. Yes, and it looks like they've done away with that. They've they've listened and been like, here's here's the roster, and it's 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 got your faves in. Kuma's in, don't worry. Yeah. So, um, and yeah. I think I think like Lei Wu Long was DLC last time, which yeah, absolutely the, absurd. That's another thing I did. I loved the guest characters of Tekken Seven, but the amount of like because I think there were three fighter passes. The amount of characters on those fighter passes, like, hey, it's this, it's this guy from the previous game. It's like, what? Why isn't he just base game, man? What? Why? Is, yeah. Why do I have to pay for Armor King, dude? Like, why is he not yeah, slightly garbage. different king? So you know, but yeah. And we're getting June back, which hey. a lot of people are happy about, myself included. We we June love a bit of June because Armor. Uh, shout but out to Glenn I, if you're watching. Yeah, shout out to Glenn. But I like the vis- like I watched some of them. I watched mm. the like, Yoshi Mitsu uh, fight. Yeah, love uh, yeah. It's Just oh yeah, just the visually the fights just look incredible and, and it's like yes this is and yeah i mean yeah yeah could get a ps5 maybe we'll yeah. see well i'll see but we'll see uh moving on to more games dan what's your nomination for the thing you're looking forward to in 2024 uh i mean it's no surprise um i am still waiting on the uh Elden Ring DLC, the uh, Shadows of the <laughs> Shadow is it Shadows of the Earth Tree, Shadow of the I think it's Shadow uh, of the Earth Tree. I want to say Shadow that's of right. the Earth Tree. Okay. Well, I mean, the, I mean, like I said, Elden Ring came out uh, last year, twenty twenty two. Now, famously, uh, from software, um, uh, um, basically, they 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 do their DLCs excellent, and it's like they sometimes the DLC ends up being, like, if not better than the base part of the game. So, um, and the fact it's taken uh, this this long for the DLC, I'm, I'm very much excited for it. And there's not much... I mean, uh, all they did was drop down, uh, drop the picture, which is, the you know, the DLC, and that is it. We've not heard anything since. And, you know, from software, you know... They they teased by not saying anything. They just like okay, mm. here it is, and then it's just silence. And I, that's been their tactic, really. Uh, and it, it kind of paid off during the the hype up to uh, Elden Ring. And I'm bit, bit yeah, I'm, I'm excited to jump back in the game because there are parts of the game that I, um, well. One part I I, I I I missed out by like killing a, an NPC which I shouldn't have because there was an actual boss so so I I was bummed out about that but so I'm excited to replay the game and then you know um 
experience the DLC. So, I, yes, I I like. Um, it sounds like it's going to be a big kind of expansion. I like when they make these very integrated into the game's expansions. I think it was kind of like that bit with the Dark Souls stuff. Yeah, like it very much expanded on the law and stuff, and it makes you want to play the entire game again, as opposed to just going in on a current character and well, yeah, going into that one piece of content. So, yeah. Well, now I'm thinking, do I make a new build, or do I stick to the same build that I know and love? So, you have all these sort of things to add, and it's nice to re um you know, experience things again. So, I'm just um, uh, excited because there's a lot of unanswered questions if you've played the game, mm. and lots of mysterious lore, like Elden John, which is like this, basically the statue that keeps popping up, like in odd places, and people are like, what's the deal with this guy? Is and it dog? <laughs> we don't know. You know, you know all this and that, and uh, um, and anyway, it's it's just nice. Um, uh, and hopefully we'll experience that this year. I think I think it that's the thing. If it's too long, it, it, I think it's got to be released this um, in twenty twenty. <laughs> well, let's I was, let's not. I was let's, on the next year. Yeah, I think I we, was going. We've to had say. the looking forward to segment filled with a lot of Elden Ring since we started yeah. this podcast. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. I was going to say. Is it three years I th- or four I years? Elden three, Ring's been. I think three of three of the four years Elden Ring's been in the looking forward segment. And I think the I th- only year it wasn't in it was because it was the year it was released. But that year it was the the best game of the year. So Elden yeah. Ring has yeah, been it's, mentioned it's four every times. One, yeah. It's been a every nomination for everything. So look forward to next year where it'll be in the looking forward section and then the year after <laughs> it'll be game of the year. So we've well, got... Well, I imagine it'll be strung together because there'll be like an Elden Ring 2 or something we... announced and it'll be on the next I think one. we've got a solid two more years of... I, I don't know if it'll be out next. Maybe it will be out next year. I don't know. But we've at least got another year, so uh, see you. So next year, um, <laughs> if you're watching next year's episode and this year's after it, let me know in the comments how accurate we were. Um, but I'll know by then, so it's pointless. But it'll boost me in the algorithms, actually, so there you go. Uh, right, well, you guys are probably tired of hearing about looking forward to video games. So, Tim, what's... The- oh. Well, on the topic, actually, of disappointing things we're looking forward to. I've had a bit of a a bit of a doomed history of things we're looking oh. forward to as well. I think in twenty one I said um the new bleach and then I never got round to finishing <laughs> old bleach and watching it. And then last year I said um the Final Fantasy sixteen and then I never got a console that can play it and it still hasn't like come to to PC. But this year I've said Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, so the second part of the Final well, Fantasy VII. On the bright side, that's going to PS. F- oh, PS Five. Uh, oh. uh, I might. I'm either I'll get a PS Five this year, or it'll come to PC a lot quicker than the first it's, one did. Is the first one on PC now? Yes, the first yes, one is yeah. now on PC. Hey! Already, it's on PS Four as well, so I already played the fucking first one. Um, think- but sixteen is still not on. I think they said something the other day about minimum specs or something. Like it was mm. just it's coming. Yeah, serious. it's coming, but it's mm. it's not there. And also, I've heard kind of middling things about sixteen. So yeah, I'm it's not, mixed. From I'm not a hundred percent very hyped for it as I was last year. So, oh well. But I I, I do have some genuine hope that. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is going to be good. Now, again, this is something else I've kind of flip-flopped on because the first part of Final Fantasy VII Remake, I enjoyed playing it. When I played through it, I thought it was a really fun experience. A lot of things I liked about it. Cinematically, it looked fantastic. Um, The music was absolutely glorious. And the gameplay, whilst it was different from what I was expecting, was fun. The thing it let me down on is that I did want it to be just a remake and it wasn't it, it's it's something new which is good that, that, that's, that's, that's a good thing and a bad thing like I do wish there was just this is a new way to play Final Fantasy 7 but it, this isn't it and that's fine Rebirth looks very interesting it's introducing a lot of characters a lot of which um, 
I particularly loved about the first one did did Highwind the best did I think of all the Final Fantasies he is um, absolutely great um, Vincent Vincent's in the yeah. fucking game and Vincent Valentine is just an absolute icon so I'm very very much looking forward to that I'm very intrigued by what story beats they're going to follow considering things that happened in the first one that I can't really talk about in in worry of spoilers, but it's very evident that it's not just going to be, oh, and this is what the gang did next. They went to this place because there are things in play that make that impossible and characters that are there that were not there before. And and it's going to create a lot of intrigue characters, uh, which, again, are some of my favourites a particular favorite who is there and shouldn't be there and i'm intrigued by how this person or person thing or not person or whatever they are trying to be as vague as possible um I'm, i'm intrigued how they're going to play a part in the story and how it's going to follow it i do have hope i have hope that they can do a good job because despite its faults the first part of remake was fun so yeah I'm hyped. I'm looking forward. And I hope that I have a way to play it soon. And I haven't wow. doomed myself for the third year in a row. I mean, it, you might as well keep a tradition going now, mm-hmm. I think. <laughs> Dan, Dan, kept, Dan kept in eventually paid off. So it means mm-hmm. either you'll play this next year, or you will finally get around to watching Bleach. That's... Or I'll die in a horrible accident. Hey, <laughs> you never know. Talking about that, Tom, what's your nomination? <laughs> Wait, your nomination is Timmy? Wait, why did you send that in, Tom? Good lord. I dread to think what picture you've got for that. (laughs) Actually, weirdly, it's taken on a phone and the date says 2024? Oh. Fuck me. I I just want to say for this bit, uh, my nomination last year was Bomber Cyberfunk, and that was great. There you go. There you go. I I, I got a good one. Um, All right, brother. So, mine this year is The Future of EastEnders. No, no. (laughs) So, um, <laughs> oh, I can't no. wait until they bring back Pat Butcher. Oh man, I'm going to come back. Um, no, mine this year is a bit abstract. Um, it's not a specific game. Also, it's the future of VR. So, I recently got a headset, a MetaQuest Three, and I'm having a, I'm having a blast with it. I think I've played it every single day now since picking it up. Hey, um, it's it's absolutely it's so great when I saw VR a few years ago I thought oh it's very much a gimmick and back then I think it was a lot of the games the VR stuff was tacked on these days a lot of games are built around it and there's in fact exclusive games on VR which are full experiences so I've been playing a few games this year now. Um, played a lot of Blade and Sorcery. There's this fun shooting range game I play called Gun Club. And a game I'm really enjoying, I've been playing more of today, is Gal Gun 2. Hey, which, shout on, out. which on VR, as a real shooter, you've got full 360 degree view. Yeah, and, that's why you play it there. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, I'm surprised there's not more real shooters on there because it lends so well to it. Um, and it's like, it's so good. The motion controls are almost immaculate. Like, motion controls have gone such a long way um, since, say, I don't know, the Wii um, and things like the, the Kinect. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I've just been enjoying it so much. And I've really, from what I understand, I don't think the Meta Quest 3 is selling mega well, but the Quest 2, for some reason, has sold tons this Christmas. So people are picking it up. And I'm hearing a lot of the normies picking them up, which is kind of... It kind of lends to the success and for the more hardcore, we'll see more experiences on it. But I have really enjoyed it. And in all honesty, I'm really excited about what's going to happen with VR and where the technology is going to go next. Because 
the Meta Quest is, unlike the other VR headsets, is completely self-contained. You can use it on your PC, but it also has like a self-contained mode where everything's just downloaded onto the Quest itself. And you don't need sensors up in your room or anything. So, yeah, I've really enjoyed it. And I'm really excited to see kind of what's going to come out for it. And Having having played Galgan Double Piece in VR as well, I'm also now very curious about the future. Uh, <laughs> and it's, it's opened my eyes uh, to things I hadn't even considered, I think. <laughs> I I've, think... I, I've I've never I've never removed an anime girl's clothing with a vacuum cleaner before, but I'm of the controversial opinion that schoolgirls should be able to keep their clothes on. But well, hey, if, that's they, just me. if they stopped harassing us, then maybe you'd have a point. But <laughs> it's I think I think as well, like the motion controls or something. So I played a lot of Blade and Sorcery, and the amount you can do with like the weapons, I think. I think you can, like, toss weapons in the air and do riposte. You could do, like, all these sweet little moves. I had a lot of fun. I persuaded the guys... I I made the guys think I was a serial killer because I was picking people up by the head and slamming them against a wall. You know... I I had a lot of fun uh, juggling pistols in... What was the name of the game, Tom? uh, Gun Club. Gun Gun Club. Honestly, it's something I want to... It's something I want to get into in real life as well, I think. Uh, Mm. That's my my second looking forward to in 2024. Uh, Imin and Tortoise is going in a whole different direction. Uh, so if you're not, tortoise USA. if you're not ready for gun juggling, then uh, you're in the wrong place. Uh, seriously, if you've listened this long, you're probably in the wrong place anyway. I'm, I'm sorry. Uh, I hope everything's okay, though. So, you know, uh, if you want to, if you want to talk about it, uh, Dan, you're free. So you know, yeah. send oh. send Dan a message. I'm not going to link him or anything. You'll find him. L- look for him. <laughs> oh no. That's what Dan's got to look forward to in 2024. Uh, random messages from people. Anyway, uh, I think that concludes the Talk Toys 2023 wrap up. We did it. We have yeah. done. I. Oh. Oh, I had everyone on mute this whole time. <laughs> Let's do it all again. Look at that. Uh... Oh, I swear to God, if that. If. If. If the audio corrupts on this, I. Uh, well. Also, though, uh, re- re- real real life, if I may uh, plug myself for just a second. Um, I've worked out streaming now on my laptop, so I may be able to stream on YouTube. So look forward to, hopefully, I'm going to try and do, like, semi-recent streams. And maybe, potentially, we could do casual talk toys in the future, in which case... You know, I'll... bring back draw toys. Yeah, or draw. I mean, we could do draw toys live. I think I would need to work that out in the background. But potentially moving forward, these podcasts may be live streams that will then go up as vods, obviously afterwards. Uh, yeah, I'll i'll try and work everything out in the background but that that's something to look forward to in 2024 for the channel uh you know assuming you you, you want to stick around i uh, thought you were gonna bring back mukbangs uh no i'm i i'm presuming they're dead i know i've not kept up bags are still a thing are they still okay a... oh well i've, I've i'm i've i'm getting too uh, two different pieces of advice here. Dan's like, oh, they're dead. They'll, they'll be coming back. And Tom's like, no, they're alive and well. Uh, let me know in the comments. Oh, guys look bang. If you don't look into it, they could be either. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Uh, let me know in the comments below it, what you know about mukbangs, because, again, it helps with the algorithm. Um, you know, so that's good. Uh, <laughs> I haven't... Also yeah. shows you've watched the entire video. Oh, so, yeah, well no, if you've watched this for... Oh, fuck, we're going to have to do at least like a minute afterwards, otherwise they'll just skip the end. If you've watched this far, comment bottle below. No no other comment, just put bottle. And I, I, I'll i be honest, by the time I've uploaded this, I'll have forgotten. So um, I'll just think you're a crazy person. Uh, but you'd have to be to enjoy this podcast. <laughs> hey! Yay! I wish I had a soundboard. Yay! I I need to get a soundboard sorted because that that would have been. Wait, hang on. We're in Discord. Uh, can someone do the Discord? Hang on. 
prepare it and then uh, is it is the soundboard up, Tim? And we're doing this live. I'm not editing this out. I can't be honest. Yeah, 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 here it comes. Here okay, it comes. hang on. Here it comes. Uh, so comment bottle in the comment section below. Uh, by the time this is up, though, I'll have forgotten where it is and think you're just a crazy person. But you'd have to be crazy to listen to this podcast. I like trains. All right then. Yeah, uh, uh, close enough. That's that's fine. <laughs> Uh, Say, fellas, did somebody mention the door? <laughs> play, play, play me out, keyboards, Tim. <laughs> okay, that'll, that'll do. Uh, thank, thank you, guys, for listening, and thank you, uh, thank you three for joining us. Uh, me, us, us as a collaborative, because the imminent tortoise nation is only growing. I've gained some amount of subscribers this year. Uh, <laughs> So th- oh, thank you all for that as well. Uh, anyone else want to give a shout out? This honestly, this ending is going on way too fucking long as it is. Like, <laughs> I want to give a shout out to brevity and uh, being you? concise. They are my favorite things. Dan, true. Last shout out. Oh, and irony. I love irony too, and um, I want to um, speak a little while about that if that's <laughs> okay with everyone. I'm gonna say uh, shout out to me. Okay, good. Tom, what's, who's, who's your last shout-out? Shout-out to all the people in the welfare back home. Got okay. you home, me. I'm looking out for you. There all you three of them. All cool. three of them. Right. <laughs> well, um, so, before we go, actually, it's time to talk about this video's sponsor...